So for this match masterclass, for the first time ever, we are going underwater into the fish's world to take a closer look at one of the most popular methods this time of year. I can almost promise you in this video, there will be something that will make you change what you initially thought about this method. So let's get underwater and find out exactly what goes on. Oh, yay! <laughs> this is a history making fish. And it's not a fish that you would associate. Get in there, first fish on water. Oh, that was definite buy, definite float sail under. That was definitely quicker, definitely. And did it, did it have a proper look at it? Right then, here we go. Our first ever underwater match masker. I've never been so excited to put my fishing under the spotlight. It may display some myths that we think are true and they're not. It's gonna probably make me look silly because fish normally do in any underwater scenes that I've seen, but we are gonna give it a go. The cameras are in. When we put them in yesterday, just off the edge of this stage in, there was loads of fish, so that was really good. We're fishing about a foot off the bottom. That was where most fish were swimming through. I'm gonna try and dob some bread over the top of them. An incredibly popular method this time of year. It's probably what everyone is fishing as it gets colder, but I wanna see how they react. Are they doing what we think they are doing? We've turned the cameras on this morning. There is some fish there. Let's hope. It's a miserable day weather-wise, but let's hope the fishing that cheers us up on that. So I'm gonna quickly go over the rig. Now I have done dobbing bread rigs before. So if you want a detailed rig um, walkthrough, perhaps look at that, because this is all about how do the fish react underwater. So I've got green slick as my elastic choice. I've got 06D mainline. I've got a 0.2 gram, which is a carbon stem float. That's because you're laying your bait and you want a nice natural fall. And we come down to the bottom end of the rig. I've got four number 10s spaced out. Again, trying to create a nice natural slow fall, six inch hook link and a size 16 hook, which is gonna house bread. So a disc of bread. Now I've said it in many videos before, if you're gonna punch and dob bread, put two slices together, compress them with your knuckles so they go together and that will stay on an awful lot better than if it's just one slice. So hook bait wise, all we're doing is punching out a disc of bread. Let's take my rig off here and we are ready to put this to the test. This is mega exciting. I hope that we can catch a few fish and learn about what we think is going on to compare to what is going on itself. So we are all marked up. Amanda is here watching the screen. I can't see what's going on but she's gonna be able to tell me if my hook bait is in the right place and more importantly, if there's fish there. But what we're gonna to do to start with, I'm now just gonna lower my rig in and hopefully, Amanda, you're gonna tell me that you can see that. Yeah, yeah so that's in the right place. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna move it too much because these are things that we wanna try later in the video we want to see if movement makes a difference so once i get this in i'm happy oh amanda said there's a cup coming well i'm pretty happy with that rig as long as amanda says to me that, that stays in shot i'm going to leave it there and see how they react do they swim past it do they come straight in let's see what happens so i'm happy with there any fish just a free swim past <laughs> okay well i've not seen anything if I was fishing in a match now, oh, 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 again, oh, oh in my ear. <laughs> if I was in a match now, my float hasn't moved. I wouldn't know that there's a fish there. Yeah, so Amanda's telling me there's fish there. So already we're seeing that you think you're sitting here not getting a bite, doesn't mean that there's not carp there. And when you take into account that we kind of know we're fishing the right depth because we're watching them underwater swim past my hook bait. That's another element when you've not got a camera that you've got to work out, depth as well. So we're one step ahead of that, but, oh. oh. <laughs> All I'm hearing is my ear is one's come right up to it, but still, 
I have not seen anything. I wouldn't know that there's a single fish there personally. So let's see how long it takes one of them to show interest. And when they do pick it up, how do they do it? Is it aggressive? These are the questions that we're gonna answer in this video. So come on, let's hope one of these grabs it shortly. Really? I've, so I've not had any movement on my float at all. What do you mean there's so many? I'm not getting any indication. <laughs> I'm not getting any indication it says there's a carp there. Oh, what happened? Oh, so I actually, that was the first indication that I saw of any fish at all. And Amanda's saying that one touched it with its lips. So I, I would have said that was a bite. You know, if I was fishing, I would 100% said that was a fish, picked up my bait and I missed it. But you saying, Amanda, you think that it didn't quite have it. Right, okay, so that, honestly, I wouldn't have known that, but interestingly, Amanda's been saying that it's been, <laughs> it's been fish swimming past, like, threes and fours and stuff, and that was, honestly, the first indicator. My float had not moved until that point. I would not have said there was a fish there, and there clearly is, so already, I mean, I'm sure, pretty sure we're going to catch them like this, but already we're thinking that uh, there have got to be other things we can do to make these fish pick up the bait. So let's go back in. Is that in shot, Amanda? Yeah. Right, okay, so we've, we've reset the trap. So currently at the moment, we've had one that I would have called a bite. Amanda's saying it didn't quite get it in its mouth. And apart from that, I have seen nothing from here visually as an angler fishing in a normal fishing situation. Ah, oh. oh, there's another proper bite. What happened? It must have. It's gone it, like it's to the float buried. So I don't. There's a tent the shot now. There's a <laughs> wow. Okay. So I, I think we've got quite a bit of footage review review here because to me, the float absolutely buried, and uh, I would have said that was 100% a hooked fish, but it wasn't. And Amanda's sort of saying that it potentially looks like it didn't have it again. So this is this is interesting, really interesting. We would have never ever have known this having not put a camera down there. But at the moment, from my fishing perspective, if I was in a match, I would have said that I've had two bites and they were proper bites, I've had no liners and I've missed them. And actually, like thinking back to when I've of fish bred in the past, you don't really miss that many bites because normally, obviously, as a bait suspended in the water, you think as they grab it, you strike. You don't, you don't normally miss many. So to miss two, it's going to be really interesting when I get to watch this footage back about what's actually happening. One swimming at it. No. See, I, this is crazy that a man is telling me that there's fish swimming past all the while that I just would not know about. <laughs> there's, are they swimming above my rig or below my rig? Yeah, see I'm getting no liners so I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that they're shallower than where I am. So it's in the right. One above it, one below, one in the middle. And they're all ignoring it. <laughs> what do you mean he's thinking about it? We looked at it for a little bit. He swam back and thought, I might take that. 
Right. Clearly, they do, they can see something isn't right. I guess. Four. Still had no indication my float at all. The only two indications I had was the two bikes that I would have said are bikes. It's so crazy to watch it like yeah, see, I wouldn't know there's any fish there personally. I, w I would have said that I'm still waiting for one to swim past it. So for the next few minutes, the same pattern seemed to continue. Numerous fish swimming past my hook bait at the correct depth. I knew it was only going to be a case of waiting to one to fully commit and I'll be finally be able to say that I am attached to my first fish that I've ever hooked underwater. And they all ignored it. Did not see anything. Oh, I've got one. It's a tench. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, get in there. The first ever fish that I have hooked underwater and I already know that it's a tench without, <laughs> without me getting it in. <laughs> That's quality. But in all seriousness, if I get this fish in, I know we're not the first people to do underwater videos, but I don't think anybody has ever caught a fish diving bread on camera underwater. I may be wrong. If I am, please correct me, but I've not seen it. So this is a history making fish that is a tench. If it doesn't pop up a tension man, then you've got some questions to be answering. <laughs> but that sat there for big periods of time with fish swimming past that Amanda said, it is a tench, you are right. It's a nice fish and it's not a fish that you would associate, get in there, first fish on the water and the hooks come out in there, that you would not associate with Dobbin bread. Let's have a look at you mate, because you are one famous tench in my eyes because that is the first one for me ever we come down caught underwater and like i said i don't know if a fish has been caught live on camera while dobbing bread we have now got a fish in the net and i am desperate to watch some of that fo footage back just to see if i can see what i think is happening underwater because obviously I've, I don't know how long I've fished there but a fair while with Amanda telling me that there's fish going past all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive in the hut out of this rain. I'm going to watch some of this footage back and see what I think is going on. So let's, let's slip back and I'm going to watch some of that footage. So I've just come into the draw shed here at Meadow Farm just to take a look at some of those footage because Amanda has been saying in my ear, there's fish swimming by, there's fish swimming part, and I knew nothing about it. And I've watched sections of this video where there's four or five fish swimming past at the right depth, completely ignoring it. Some of them do come up and have a little bit of interest, show interest in the hook bait at least, but just hanging it there clearly isn't the best way to do it one thing i would like to note and i've watched the a little look over it again now the first and second bite that i missed to me looks like that hook bait does go in but not fully in because it's quite a big hook bait the bread sitting there looks nice but watching the clip back i think if i had a smaller disc of bread that that would have gone further in the mouth for that that was an f1 specifically that missed it and i think i would have caught that fish had i had a smaller disc of bread on so that is going to be my next move i'm going to move to a smaller disc of bread see if it still stands out because i think it looks good in the water the, the hook bait looks good the fish can clearly see it and then obviously we go into hooking that tench just before it, a carp knows it then the tench comes in and he absolutely nails it really positive bite and the first fish caught underwater so yeah i think back out on the box back in the rain and next we're going to try a smaller disc of bread just to see if the first fish that picks it up results in a better hook hold or hook ratio because that we missed two bites and then that fish so 
that's next plan. Let's get back out there, smaller disc of bread, and see what they make of that. Right then, back out in the rain. Not picked the nicest day for it, have we? But the first thing we're going to try is I'm going to try and change the size of the bread punch. Because having watched that, I think I would have definitely hooked the first, second fish if I was using a smaller punch. So initially, I've started on... This is either an eight or a 10 mil. That's a 10 mil punch is what I started on. That's what I've always fished when dobbing bread, but I've got a six mil punch here and actually six mil in a punch looks tiny. So that's gonna be my next change just to see if the first fish that comes up to it and actually has a go to eat it, if we connect with the bite. I've still got my two discs of bread. I fought the hook bait looked really nice in the water. It was very obvious, it was very standout. When it falls through the water, it has a lovely sort of slow sink rate. So I can see why dobbing bread works. I can see why it's very popular. And also, the longer it's in there, it did swell up lovely and it'd be nice and soft. So we've now got on a six mil punch which I've never, you know, I've never dobbed a bit of six mil punch bread, and I probably should have, but it looks tiny. It looks like a four mil pellet in a bread punch size. Let's do it again. Again, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lower it in there and hang it there. We're not gonna do any movement because that I think is what I'm gonna try next because so many fish swam past at the right depth. Amanda's telling me, oh, there's one. I just landed on a calf's face. <laughs> Right, so it's in there, and we will now see what their reaction is to that. Is it going to be any different? Are uh, the bites going to connect? I, I don't know. This is all trial and error. But first of all, is the hook bait in the right place? Yeah. yeah. So hook bait's in the right place. Any fish there? Yeah, you've had a couple swim past. And a couple swim past already. Right, okay. So there's fish there. The hook bait's in. Everything is set. Let's have a look how they react to a smaller punch of bread for, let's say, experiment number one, away from the norm. Like I'm trying to put across here, how I started is how I have dobbed bread for years. And already, as I've said, I wouldn't have believed there was the level of fish down there that it is. I've had two indications which I thought were bites and missed. I've connected with one. And in my eyes so far, what has happened is one swims, one fish has swam past, I missed it, so is another one, and I've connected with the third one. That's clearly not the case. We are thinking that there's a lot less fish in front of us than sometimes there probably is. And yes, it is winter, it's raining, it's miserable, it's cold, but this is when we fish dobbin bread. So quite possibly <laughs> your swimmers look like this in the past and you don't know it, but. Right, let's see if one is willing to grab hold of this. No, didn't get any indication at all. One hit the line. Yeah. My float did not move. No indication, no. See, I think if you're saying there's that many fish swimming, brushing my line, my float's not moving, when we think we're getting line bites, I don't think we are. I think if your float moves, something has grabbed your hook bait because I've not had anything else. I've not had a single movement unless you've told me something's grabbed it and there's fish swimming past all the while. So when you think you get a liner, I don't think it is a liner. We, we might be able to prove it in a moment if we do get one, but so far, whenever you've told me that fish are swimming past my rig, touching it, that's not moving. And that's a sensitive, it's a 0 0.2 gram float. That's probably maybe because of the shot. It's really light though, it's number 10 shot, 0 0.2 gram float. I don't think, you know, I would say if something brushed past that, I would see it, but I haven't. But the hook bait moved. Yeah. yeah, see that float hasn't moved at all. I've got a little bit more bristle showing than I normally would because if not, you won't be able to see it on camera. But normally with bread and the bites we've had, when it's an actual bite, 
and the fish picks it up, it's proper bam and you're in. Very similar to before, the next few minutes saw loads of fish swimming past my hook bait, again at the right depth. And it was worth noting that the smaller hook bait definitely wasn't more attractive than the larger hook bait. But the real test here was going to be if the first fish that picked it up resulted in a hooked fish. Would the conversion rate be better with a smaller hook bait? That was what I really wanted to find out. <laughs> he wants it, he wants it, he doesn't want it. <laughs> Still had no indication whatsoever. Didn't see it, nothing at all. To be fair, when they're just touching with their lips, unless they move that last shot, if I don't if move the hook bait, I won't see a registration, but if they need to move that bottom shot for me to see a bite. So I think, yeah, that's why I don't think you're seeing that many. Oh, yay. <laughs> Did he have a look at it first? He was coming up to it quite slowly. Yeah, because you were, you were sort of pre-warned me that that bite was going to happen. But as far as a bite goes, that fish, I have saw no indications and it came up from what Amanda said, it's grabbed it and I've hooked it. There was no miss bites. So maybe a smaller disc of bread, it's a tiny little mirror carp. Not very big, I bet he looked bigger on camera, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but there you go, hooked in the top lip as you would expect. But Let's think about it, that tiny little disc of bread, this fish has actually probably got a big enough mouth to eat a 10 mil punch of bread, but a certainly little F1 might not have. And that is pretty successful, I think. A smaller bit of bread, one bite, one fish, second fish on camera, we are flying. I'm gonna have a quick look at that footage now. I think it's gonna be a repeat now. I need to see what's going on before I can decide my next move. So I'll get this one put back, have a look at the footage and then um, I think we'll try something else. Footage review time again. This is the best bit for me because I have never seen my fishing underwater and I am absolutely amazed sitting here just watching this footage play out. Just how many fish go past. Like almost constantly there is a fish on camera and bearing in mind we've got a, a very small window I would not have said that in a fishing situation. And yes, it's winter. I've said it before. Yeah, they're perhaps they're not eating as much, but maybe they can sense a camera. But I don't think they can. I, I think this is just naturally what's happening all the while. And we just don't know sometimes the sheer volume of fish that are going through. We've got to be able to get them to pick it up quicker. That was definitely quicker. Looking here now at this hook bait. I still think it's big enough to grab attention. I can see fish, they're definitely noticing the hook bait there. One of them has even come up, just touched through his lips, didn't actually open its mouth. But so decrease in size of the hook bait, I don't think has affected the affected the visual side of it. I still definitely think it's it stand out enough for them to grab it. But what it did do is that first fish that came in from the um, the background picked it up sucked it in and I've hooked it straight away. The first fish is actually taking the bait I've hooked. So I quite like that. I quite like the change of hook bait. I think that made a difference. So the next one's going to go back out on that. But I think, and I've said it in any videos I've done before, movement when you're dobbing bread or in, in a lot of fishing situations actually is one of the biggest pluses. And having seen this and seen these fish swim past a motionless bait, I think... If I can lower the rig in, keep dropping it through, so you get the natural sort of six, eight inch fall at the end and repeat that every 20 seconds, which is what I would do fishing. We haven't done it so far because we wanted to see this and test it. But now I think I'm gonna go with four mil hook bait, sorry, six mil hook bait, and I'm gonna just lower that rig in like I normally would. Every 20 seconds, flow it through, see if that fall crack, uh, catches their attention and makes them grab it. So that's the next plan. Let's see if movement, makes a difference into your fishing when you're dobbing bread. But that is crazy how many fish are swimming past and I just simply do not know about it. Right then, so this one is gonna be movement. Now I think 
this is the most important thing when daubing bread. So I'm hoping they're not going to make me look stupid here and uh, it is going to make a difference. But I have already potentially changed my views as to why it works and hopefully we might be able to show it. But initially I'm thinking what I do is the reason why every sort of 20, 30 seconds I'm lifting my rig and swinging it like a foot or so the other way is because I'm thinking you need to drop it in front of a fish. Well, I think the footage has shown that my hook bait has pretty much always been in front of a fish. So I don't know if that's actually true now, but what I think is true is it will grab their attention more. So hopefully a lot of those fish that are swimming past, if I can just lift my float out every 20, 30 seconds, like a float length, let it flutter it back down. I obviously can't fully lay my rig in like I normally would be because you won't see anything on camera. But all I'm going to do is, is that in shot, Amanda? Yeah. So that's in shot. So every sort of 20 seconds, all I'm going to do is lift it up about a foot and I'm going to lower it back down. Hopefully on the screen, that's creating a bait. We'll just lift that shot and it'll flutter back down. And if I can time that, I mean, it's completely randomly guessed because I'm not going to use Amanda to tell me when to do it because that's you wouldn't be able to do that in a situation but let's see if me just putting movement into the bait makes a difference so that, is there any fish there at the moment or so there is one fish there so hopefully i think it's all about timing and this is why you have to do it quite regularly i am predicting if one swims past it and i lift and drop at the right time for the natural sort of eight inches where my shot is away from the hook, that bread will sink. And I think it might make them grab it quicker. I might be completely wrong, <laughs> but we will, this is what it's for. This is very rarely do you get the chance to see what is actually happening underwater. And you know, I have already said, yes, I'm not laying my full rig in like I normally would because what that would allow to happen is the bait literally then sink from the top all the way down to your rig. So at any point, you could intersect the carpet one foot deep, two foot, three foot, and so on until you get to the bottom. Obviously trying to film it on camera, we can only focus that on a very small area and try and make movement in like the, the sort of one, two foot square that we've got to fish in. But let's see if it makes a difference. Has, has anything swimming past Andrew? Or? I don't want to lift it when you say they're swimming past, but I'll, if I manage to create movement. He just knocked it. He just knocked it. <laughs> so there, I put, did they react to it or? No, it's still swimming past it. So if they're still swimming past, I'm lifting dropping as I normally would be. But like I said, it might be completely wrong. It, it might not be movement that's helping but I don't think it, I don't think it could hinder it. It'd be interesting if anything shies away from it when you move it, because I think as long as it's natural, which is why you fish, you know, small hooks, light lines, light, light shot on the line to create a nice, slow, natural fall, I think makes a difference. And if we eventually do get a bite, I wonder if it's very quickly after I lower it or if it's while it's dropping, or if they just have it there when it's hanging like they have been. So it was time to test out if movement really did make a difference. Again, plenty of fish in and out of the swim, looking at the hook bait, but would movement really encourage them to pick up that hook bait? My initial thought would be yes, but obviously we had to prove it and see if my initial thoughts were actually correct. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, what happened there? I missed. I only looked, I only looked, I was looking at you. Ah, <laughs> I definitely, I definitely, definitely got a bite. So we'll see when we review the footage what that was. But the bread, well, unless it was a liner, that definitely was a bite. And it came pretty quickly after I moved it. The bread is still on. 
this is one plus is everyone always says oh how do you know if the bread's staying on so well i've moved that a lot and that double um double slice pushed together definitely makes a difference in keeping it on i've even struck there and there's been a bit of bread on so let's try again i don't it's certainly well from from what i can see here in the fishing angler's point of view it hasn't increased the bite time but when we review the footage be interesting to see if they are paying attention to movement if they're ignoring it um I, yeah i i would have expected to catch one quicker by doing this and i don't think it has been so maybe maybe another myth busted <laughs> oh dear they're gonna really they're going to really make us think about it. Clearly one was looking at it then. Cause <laughs> oh, I did have a little indication then, but not enough to strike. Oh, that was definite bite. Definite float sail under. Did it take it? Definite, definite bite. The float sailed away. Proper bite. Let's try that again. What was it? Oh, the orange koi. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> That's also slightly expelled the myth that the smaller hook bait means I'm going to connect with every fish. Because that's a couple of bites I missed there as well. Let's go again, though. Did it? Did it react to the movement? I don't. I wasn't looking. I was looking at you again. Ah, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Let's try again. Is that in position? Yeah. yeah. Right. Come on, the fishies. Oh, my hat. I thought my hood was up. <laughs> I'm getting soaked. Right, the hood's up now. Oh, yeah. another change. <laughs> oh, attention's coming. Oh, I don't know what to say. I just, yeah, as I said, it, it definitely. Well, I definitely thought the movement would make a big, big difference, but that wasn't a quicker bite. I'm going to go back in the hut after this and see if I think they're reacting to it or not. Really, this one's only a nice little one look at that you i would have never said that we'd caught tench today of all them carp and f1s are seen on camera and the two fish that well we've had three but the two of the three have been tench perhaps they're a bit more this is like a bar of soap <laughs> perhaps they're a bit more willing to to grab i don't think i'm gonna be able to hold them up properly for you it's an absolute bar of soap but there we go another fish another one underwater let's go and see what we make of that when we're adding movement into the rig so much to break down here so let's get into it so first of all let's say that movement didn't make as much of a difference as i thought it would certainly didn't increase the bite time watching the footage as we look back at it now looking at fish swim through occasionally when i twitch it you can see a bit of a tension grabbing a fish spins around and certainly has a look so i'm it didn't hinder it in that aspect, but then other times you could argue that there's a fish online to pick it up and I twitch it and it spooks it. So there's an argument for both. I'll let you evaluate what you think of your own footage. A couple of important things to think about, a couple of key moments. The first miss bite was actually a little F1. You can see initially it sort of looks like it's coming in to pick up the hook bait. But then just as it comes towards it, unintentional because I didn't know, I, I tweak it. But as it flutters back down, it definitely grabs its attention. It spins back round, goes to eat it, but it doesn't actually pick up the hook bait. If you notice, the, the line is just above its lips and the hook bait is not actually in its mouth and it didn't pick it up. And then if we go fast forward and flick to the second miss bite, that one is actually different. Like the koi coloured carp does come in and it definitely 
has the bait in its mouth. So that is 100% a missed bite. But the first bite we've missed on the four mil punch. So I still do think that that has made a difference having a little four mil. But yeah, movement in this instance, I don't think makes a huge difference. But I do think in a normal fishing scenario, it does. And what I mean by that is you can watch here, fish swimming past we're fishing pretty much a perfect depth. We can see that because there's an underwater camera here looking at it. We can see the fish are at a perfect depth. They haven't got to go up or down to feed. Most of the time they're there. There's no chance of you knowing that in a normal situation. So what I think movement does, and you're moving it different to this, you're picking your rig out, you're laying the whole rig in, and then obviously it swings on an arc down until it's at the full length of the rig. So if your rig is four foot deep, that bait falls through one foot, two foot, three foot, until it gets to four foot. If the fish are at two foot, you've got a chance to intercept them. If you don't do that movement and you're fishing at four foot, you've got no chance of intercepting them because you don't run the hook bait past them. So I think I would still move the hook bait purely because you can't know as much as we can know with a camera looking at our hook bait. But if you've got the perfect depth, I don't think you need to move it looking at this. So I think you lay your rig in when you get a bite. So if you get a bite on the drop, you know that they're probably a bit shallower. I would shallow your rig up and then I would probably hang it still, maybe with a little bit of movement at the depth you think there are. So use your movement to find the depth, then perhaps decrease the amount of movement that you do because I don't think watching this, I think more fish have shied away from it when I move it than they did pay attention to it when they're not it's obviously it's impossible to time perfectly because you just you luck when you're moving your rig but if you time it perfectly perhaps they would grab it but yeah there's there's a lot to be learned there and i think you can see why when you're lowering your rig and it does make a difference but i don't think it's because like i said i don't think it's because it's there at that point i think you're catching them at the depth when you're fishing at a wrong depth on a deeper rig so right next i want to try and see if we can get them more interested in the hook bait. I perhaps will try different hook baits later, but the best thing for me has been always bread. So I wanna try and flavor it and see if creating a flavor in that bread makes them home in on that hook bait quicker. So that's what we're gonna try now. We're gonna get some flavors out and see if that makes a difference. Liquid time then. Does liquids in this instant make a difference i'd like to hope so but some of the stuff that we'd thought were already with um perhaps already had a different valuation so i'm going to stay with the four mil i keep saying four mils because it looks so small it's a six mil punch but it does look like a little four mil pellet to me but looking underwater you can see that oh my hands are wet and cold now i'm struggling to get this on you can see that it still sticks out so what we're going to do liquid wise i've got a tub here and i've got some of my favorite liquids but certainly in the winter time i'm a big fan of citrusy slash fruit oils just because I've, i get away from like the krill and stuff like that that i would use in the summer i think a fruity bait in the winter is the way to go and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to apply a good squeeze of this oil onto that hook bait bread one great thing about it is it will soak in flavors so i'm hoping if i just hold cool that smells good i'm hoping if i hold that there for a second that's now going to have taken in some of that citrusy flavor but is it going to make a difference in the fishing as i've just dropped in the edge here loads of oil has come off it so if it has gone into that bread, I think potentially it would have a bit more attraction. Obviously you don't know how much comes off as you're shipping it out there, but it's got to hold something. Bread soaks up liquid so quickly. There's got to be some sort of flavor enhancement in there. So is that in Amanda? It's in. Right, so I'm not gonna do too much movement with this. So I'm gonna see if liquid enhancements have made a difference. Is there any fish there? Well, I've just had a look at it and moved off. Right, okay, so there is fish there. That's the main, Amanda said one's had a look. So now we are just gonna leave it there. I'll put the odd bit of movement into, but not too much, because I've already said, I think we're fishing at the right depth and it didn't make that much of a difference. This test 
is if flavours make a difference. If a couple come up to it, are they more willing to take it? Amanda says, I've got one coming up. But it turned away. So in that instance, no. But we've still got a long, long while yet before we're anywhere near the length it took to get the, the other bite. So come on the liquids. Let's see if you can make a bite a bit quicker. Oh, I had a bit of a... Oh. That was, that was a liner, was it? Yeah, that I would have probably struck at that, but I, it didn't properly go under. That was definitely quicker, <laughs> definitely. And did it, did it have a proper look at it? It came in quite quick, but he had a look at it. I wonder if that just stopped him in his tracks, a bit of smell. Another fish. It's not taking too long to get these fish in because I'm fishing a little bit heavier than I actually would because we're getting away from that stage. And this one's an F1 though. Here we go. Nice. That was the quickest bite we have had today. Did that come from the flavours? Well, you can only say that you'd like to think so because of how much quicker that... Wee, calm down how much quicker that was. They're so lively and they're absolutely freezing cold. I think that's the first thing to take from this is you can see how many fish swim past, but sometimes just making them eat your hook bait is a lot, lot harder than you think. But in these cold weathers, fish just don't need to eat. They, you know, they can go weeks, months without eating anything sometimes. And you trying to make them eat isn't always as easy as you think it's going to be, as this video is probably proving. But there we go, there's an F1. That's a, what have we had now? I have a two tench, an F1 and a little carp. So let's get that back, watch that footage and see if I think it made a difference with the flavours. I am very happy that that made a difference. And I'm going to say it definitely, definitely made a difference because the bite time, you can see, see by the length of the video clip, is so much shorter. Obviously, we're not showing you every single second we're fishing because it's a long time sometimes to sit and watch fish swim up to a bait, but it was probably half the time, maybe even a third of the time as the other bites. And here now, skimming through the footage, they're definitely more interested in it. More fish come up and get very close to it, then go away, but it's definitely drawing attention there. I'm not saying it's a miracle cure and it goes in, they go straight in and they smash it and, and they pick the first one that goes in, picks it up. That didn't happen, but clearly for me, more fish are turning to look at it, probably because there's a bit of scent. And then obviously we had the one fish that did pick it up in a lot quicker time than before. So I think that is quite conclusive for me that it made some sort of a difference. So I think we've got two things now. As a good bite when that fish picks it up. We've got two things. I think a smaller hook bait and a liquid boosted hook bait has improved the reaction to how the fish are viewing this bait, eating this bait, and so on. So yeah, there's a couple of things. Obviously, you can take your own conclusion from any of this footage and drop us a comment because it'd be interesting to know what, what you think as well. But so far, that's my conclusions. What I'm going to do now is I do also like colour as well. So in that same liquid flavour, I'm going to drop a little bit of colour in there, perhaps red, so red's one of my favourites, and see if flavoured and colours combined makes it even quicker. So that's the next test. Let's get some colour on, as well as the flavour. And let's catch another one. So the next test is going to be adding some colour to that flavour as well. So we've now got colour and flavour helping us. I actually do think that that white is good, you know, just standard bread is good. I, I quite like white as a colour in general, but they may have seen it an awful lot of times. Obviously you've got to remember, there's a lot of fish swimming past and they're not grabbing it straight away. Not saying you could ever create that, but there's a chance to improve it. So what I've done in here is that same citrus flavour. I've just put some Hopefully you can see I put some red dye in it as well. 
and I'm just going to dip my hook bait in it, leave it soaking in there. It's not dyeing it completely red, but hopefully it's going to give it a little bit of a tinge. There you go, look at that. That's definitely red now. It has dyed that pretty, <laughs> pretty red actually. Let's hope that that makes a difference. Like I said, I do like white, but they might have seen it so many times now that it it's not as effective. Now, when that left my hand here, that was really red. So it'll be interesting to see how much color or flavor is washed off. Because if it's not, if I lower that in, it's not red, that means the flavor's not staying on as much as we think anyway. So we're in, is it in shot, Amanda? Um, yeah. And is it red? Yeah. Okay. The car nearly, <laughs> car nearly took it. That would have been good, wouldn't it? That would have been a real, a real eye opener but so we are saying that definitely then some of the flavor and color is clearly staying in there because the bait is still dyed so as we were saying it's definitely a bait that will soak up oh that was quick that was really quick what happened then because i missed it so amanda's saying it looks like it went in its mouth but i didn't connect with anything so but that was ridiculously quick. That was so much quicker than anything we've done before. So we could be on to something here. I've always been a massive fan of flavors and colors and all of my fishing, just to have different options, different from what every other person is doing. Like how many times, I'm just gonna do it again. I'm just gonna dip my hook bait in this liquid. I'm gonna give it a little while in there because I want it to sort of soak it all up. But yeah, how many times have these fish, or any fish in other lakes as well, seen bread dobbed in front of them? <laughs> Probably quite a lot. And if you can make it a little bit different, maybe it's a little bit quicker. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be interested to see when we review that footage there, because to me, that looked like it was a proper bite, it, it was, you know, there was no messing around. It didn't look like a liner. So if that fish had it in its mouth, that would be interesting. But it certainly was the quickest bite we've had since we've been filming. So in shot. Okay, we are good. I think we've got this nailed down now. I know where the camera is. The depth is good. That's in position. Any fish there? No fish there currently. No fish. So all we know now then is hopeful that a couple of fish come in and when they do that flavor attraction as well as the color makes them grab it as quick as that other one did because then i think all of us will be uh, definitely including a pot of liquid and a pot of color next time we go fishing so they are still Is it in a good place? Uh, yeah. There is still fish swimming through then. Yeah, still there. Another one's coming in. Yes! Oh, yeah. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't even, you didn't even warn me! It, was, it, just, it, it looked like it was swimming in front of it. Oh, right. <laughs> I was waiting for Amanda. She's been getting really excited going, that's what I get, that's what I get it. And she didn't warn me. But that is another fish. And after that one grabbed it pretty quick, that took a little bit longer. This is a smaller fish as well. It's only a little common, but I think that's emphasizing the fact that I think it's worth using that smaller hook bait. If there's fish in your lake that are this size, he's got his fin caught in the net. If there's fish in that this size, then it is worth using a smaller hook bait. But there we go, that's flavor and color together. Like I said, we, whoa, whoa, that was close. We almost had an instant bite and this one took it took a little while, but again, it was, I think it's still an increased catch time compared to what we did have. And clearly not a record breaker, but another fish. So I'm gonna watch that footage, see if I think it made a difference or not. Well, I'm not juggling them anymore. And then I've got one more thing I want to try. And then I think we've give it a good go about trying to work out what's best for this kind of fishing. So the coloured additive as well as the flavour, taking a look back, first of all, it's well worth noting that the first time we dropped it in, 
really bizarre, like a common comes almost looking up for it, almost waiting for it to fall. I don't know if it smelt it or saw it, but it definitely went for it. Didn't get it, missed it, flicked with his tail, and then he was off. But the very next fish that came in, that was the missed bite we had. Again, straight in on the hook bait, and that should have been a bite. It definitely picked it up. That is a missed opportunity. We then had to wait a little while, not as long as when it didn't have any flavour or dye on it, but eventually, again, a few carp were looking at it, then one did pick it up, and bam, we were in. So I think the best one so far has just been the flavour, but I think there probably is a point out there where certain venues, certain light colours would make a difference. So it's definitely worth taking. Probably worth noting as well, the camera is definitely... We're in winter, aren't we? The light is fading. The camera is definitely harder for us to see. I don't know if the water's clarity is getting worse as the fish are moving and stirring it, or the light's fading, but oh, I've got one more thing I really want to try if these cameras will still let us do it uh, before we have to wrap up. So I think we can still see enough to, 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 you know, we can work out what's happening and you can see exactly what we need to see to learn from it. So the last thing I want to try is... I think bread is definitely the best bait for this, but what do they react to with a couple of maggots hanging there? Another great win to bait, a little bit of movement. Does that make them grab it any quicker or any slower? Uh, a corn skin as well could work. We can't try everything. <laughs> Maybe we come back and try more, but I'm gonna try a couple of maggots, see how that they react to that, because that would be very interesting. But I still think bread is gonna be the number one for, for dobbing, certainly when they don't really wanna eat anything. So let's go and try one more test before we wrap it up and then we'll make a final conclusion. Right, let's see then. The last thing we want to look at is maggots. What do they do to maggots? Do the movement help or is it the bread that I think is the best? So hopefully this water clarity and there's definitely less fish in front of the camera now. Um, so it's, a, it's obviously very hard to, to test, but fish are always going to move throughout the day. I mean, it's, it, it could be that They've changed depths and they're now a bit higher or they've just moved like up, up the bank or something because we've caught a lot of fish. So there's less fish for sure, but can you see that hook bait, Amanda? Yeah. So the hook bait's in screen. And now we've got to see, hopefully, is there any fish there? Or? Uh, there's one. There's one. Okay, so hopefully we'll be able to get a gauge of when a few fish swim through, if they react to maggots any differently or if it's exactly the same. That is what we're trying to find out here. I, I've said it many times, I think bread is the best bait for this, but there's definitely, they're gonna eat maggots, you know, that everything eats maggots. If there was other fish in your lake, I mean, there is quite a lot of hide in here, wouldn't surprise if one of them swam in and nabbed it, but yeah, it's, it won't do you any harm having different hook baits. I think over a course of a period though, bread is gonna be the one that, that catches the most fish consistently, in this style anyway. Oh, oh, you got me excited. What happened? I didn't, I didn't see anything on the float. Amanda said there's one look, one's watching it apparently. No, he's gone. So he didn't grab it. I didn't see any indication that there was, no one's coming. No, ignored it. We have got a plane right above us. So apologies if the noise is a bit loud. <laughs> All the joys of filming, and it is really cold now. I'm starting to, I'm obviously been sitting out in this rain all day. My hands are starting to lose a bit of functionality. Hopefully we can catch one more. One coming. No. Looking at it or what? Stared it and swam off. Yeah. You gave it a proper stare down. Hmm. Sounds like a few of them are having a look at it though. Like oh, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got that. That was quite quick, and from what you were telling me, quite a lot of them were interested in it at least. How, um, how crazy is it as well? We've not fed anything today. I would not dream of 
sitting there in a match, having two maggots on my hook and just waiting for a bite. But it proves that if you're in the right area at the right depth, you don't actually need to feed anything this time of year. A hook bait is attraction enough to catch fish. Obviously, if you want to get more fish in the area and they're willing to feed, then bait is going to do that. But as it gets colder and colder, my hand here is now starting to shiver as that cold, that I think the less feed you need to actually use, that's why bread's good. Maggots clearly work, because I've got a fish here caught in my hands underwater right in front of the camera. So let's get it slipped back. I'm gonna have a quick look at that footage. Then we'll do an evaluation of dobbing as a general. Maggots then, the last evaluation of dobbing. And I've got to say, to be honest, I'm actually, pretty impressed with, I say pretty impressed with that I used them all the while, but I don't really dob with them that much. I use them feed them on the bottom here all the while. They're the best bait for that. But yeah, I thought that bread was going to be definitely like easily the best, but having watched some of this back, these fish really stare at it. Like there's a couple of fish that just really eyeball the hook, but they don't necessarily take it. But I think the movement has probably created a little bit of interest and it didn't take that long for that f1 to grab it again really confident comes in bam top lip and you can see the panic on the fishes if they had expression just see as you look at it, it really panics and we managed to catch it so i think maggots for me might play a little bit more part in dobbing when it comes to uh future sessions now you can just about see enough. I did say the camera quality is definitely going. The light's definitely fading. So that is going to have to be it for this episode. I'd love to come back and do more. There's so many more things to try. But I think we've learned enough there that we can be confident to improve our fishing going forward. For me, smaller hook baits, certainly if I'm fishing for smaller fish, if they're all big five, six pound carp, I probably would stay with the eight, the eight and 10 mil punch. But smaller hook baits, if it's a mixed fishery, Different hook baits, maggots, bread, corn skin, definitely worth a try. And obviously that flavour was the biggest thing with the bread as well. Colour, again, it, there's so many things you can try. But I think the whole thing to take from all of it is when they don't want to eat, I don't think regardless of what you do, you can really make them eat that much. Obviously, every now and again, something comes and grabs it, takes it and you catch one. But for the amount of time that we were sitting there and you're sitting there in a match thinking there's nothing there, there's nothing there, and you give up, I don't know, if, if I take anything from this, it would be don't give up because this has been a real eye-opener to the amount of fish it takes to go past, look at it, before one will actually grab it. So, yeah, don't give up. Try different things. Get the depth right. Lower the rig through. Smaller baits. And I think we can all take something from it. I'll be mega interested to think your evaluation will it change your fishing should i have tried something else have i missed something this is all learning curves and i want to do more underwater i want to learn more fishing on the bottom fishing a jigger float there's loads we can do and that will definitely come this is the first episode hopefully they're only going to get better that's enough food for me enough food for thought that it's going to change a few things and hopefully improve my catch rate so there you go i hope you've enjoyed it don't forget hit that subscribe button hit the bell notification to be notified next time the match Masterclass goes live because we are going to be back with more underwater with more facts figures and stuff for you to try in your own fishing